Okay, hello guys. This is going to be a tutorial on how to make Mad VR look mad. Okay, that was not even a funny joke at all. All right, to get started, you need to install Mad VR inside of the directory of um, Media Player Classic. So I'm using Mad VR through Media Player Classic. What you want to do is install it. You can extract the whole file, and then there's going to be something that says um, there's going to be something that says install. You need to install it using administrative properties. You can right click it and you install it, and you're good to go. And then set it up in. Um, you need to set it up inside of Media Player Classic so that it it is your video encoding device um, or software. Uh, per se. The reason why I use MadVR is because MadVR looks freaking insanely good. And uh, this is a tutorial to make MadVR look brilliant, okay? This is how MadVR works. I'll show you how it works, okay? First, you want to, first off, you want to make sure that you have the right display, okay? So what I am using right here, this is a monitor. It's not a CRT. It's not a, it is a digital monitor, um, that's useful okay if you're using a TV you're probably using a digital TV all right identification blah 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 native bits this does work with native 10 bit displays and 10 bit uh, video so if you have a 10 bit TV most TVs that are coming out now that are smart TVs are 10 bit you want to click this little 10 bit um, don't need to mess with any of that. Don't need to really mess with any of that. You can change the contrast of the video, um, the brightness, saturation, everything right there. This is very important here, okay? If you have an HDR device, the device itself, the monitor and the TV, do HDR for you. If you pass the HDR content to the display, the display will display HDR content. This is used for when you don't have an HDR display, all this converting stuff. But if you have an HDR display, make sure you're using pass through HDR content to the display. It's important that your display does the HDR for you. That's what that's for. I don't know whether or not this works. I have not used HDR content yet, but I do have a display that has HDR compatibility. I will test that in the future. Um, after you're done with that, you want to go to deinterlacing, uh, activate deinterlacing when, if in doubt, deactivate deinterlacing. You, you don't want an interlaced video, okay? It looks like garbage. It doesn't, it's not filtered properly. There's going to be weird jaggies. I always just keep this on because why not, okay? This is only look at the pixels in the center of frame. You don't want that. You want the program to, like, like actually process all of the video like all of it every frame by frame not just looking at the center of the frame and it's bad for anime if you watch anime um this is very um, uh important uh, because uh, banding is the differences in lights and colors trying to emulate contrast so if you have banding you'll have stripes in between colors and shifts of pitches of colors and having it on high looks really really good there's not a lot of penalty for using this so might as well use it reduce ringing artifacts um, ringing is like uh, you'll have an image and there's a glow around the image because the resolution is too low this will get rid of that or it will try to get rid of that uh, I don't use any edge enhancing for this zoom does not really matter to me uh, chroma upscaling. This is not super important since it's chroma and the most important thing is Luma. Uh, when it comes to video playback, just video playback. Um, chroma is important, but having chroma set to by cubic, by cubic 60 and anti-ringing, anti-ringing will get rid of the weird ringing effect around objects so always have this on image down sampling so if you have a large image you have an image that is larger than your display say I wanted to watch a 4k video on my 1080p monitor it will use this kind of down sampling um, 
And so I like to use cubic 75 because it gives it a little bit of a blur since it's a huge, say, you're watching a 4K video and you're going to a 1080p display. This will take that 4K and it will smooth off the, Im the image just slightly so that, so that you are able to uh, view the image and it not be too sharp for your downsampled display. And I also have anti-ringing, again, extremely important. Now this is the most important tab in this whole entire thing, uh, besides the rendering tab below. Um, image upscaling. Okay, so I like to use anti-aliasing because I have a pretty decent GPU. If you don't have a decent GPU, you wanna to go to standard and do the exact same settings that I set here, except for in standard, because standard is a lot easier to use other than using anti-aliasing. I have a 1070 in my computer, so it's not really a big problem for me. Um, algorithm quality, you can do little bit doubling or quadrupling. Now, it seems like quadrupling would be the one that you would want, right? But doubling is more, it just looks more natural, and it's better even for smaller videos. So I use Luma doubling. I set this to high because if you go to very high, it is extremely demanding on your GPU and your CPU. It is extremely demanding. I don't advise you to use very high because the image quality doesn't even look better. Um... We are doubling every single video by setting super sampling. Now, if you want the highest quality uh, sharpness of a video, you can do the uh, Jink AR, which is active ring canceling, and this does by cubic 60 for down sampling. So this does a little bit of stuff for your down sampling as well. Um, and so this is what you want to set this to for the best possible quality performance, all right? This right here. This is the most important thing that you should get out of this video, right here. And then here's a little bit of stuff that you want to use if you really want to use it. I use upsca upsa uh, upscaling to make it look better, so I don't really need this. This tab. When you come to this tab, it's going to have enable automatic full screen exclusive mode you do not want that it looks like garbage and the uh, the whole display in full screen it looks it looks awful for the best quality you want to put it on direct 3d 11 presentation this is for windows 10 and windows 7 uh, windows 8 windows 8.1 it works fairly well you want to present every single frame with a vsync now this is good if you have a really powerful computer it depends on whether or not it works for your laptop you will have to decide uh, but put use direct 3d 11 presentation that should work pretty well window that's not really important that's not really important Stereo 3D, I don't have a 3D display, and I don't want a 3D display. If you want smooth motion, this does kind of what your TV would do in smooth motion. It takes the image, and then it spreads it out between two images, and it adds an extra image in between each image. So it will make it will make the video look smooth, but that's not what I want. I want accurate video, and I want it to look good. <coughs> um, this tab is extremely important because it's going to be an on order dither order delivery and to make sure that your image looks as smooth as possible without any kind of noise or any kind of weird banding effects it looks better with this so um you want to go to error diffusion one and you want to turn off all of the quality performance settings here all of these turn them all off they all look like garbage. And you're good to go. And everything should work pretty good. So I hope this tutorial helped you, you know. Uh, it may or may not have helped you, but these are the best settings that I can possibly get out of Mad VR. And have a good time, guys.